What's going on everybody and welcome back. Ever since the next gen console were released back in 2020, it's been difficult for most to get their hands on one. And since Xbox came out with two versions of the next gen, unlike PlayStation, many have gotten the Xbox Series S and I heard nothing but great reviews on it. I was able to purchase one over the weekend since they're so easily accessible and it was on sale for the holidays. This here is the Xbox Series S, the cheaper and less powerful version of the Xbox Series X but it doesn't lack in fun and enjoyment. While the Series X is native 4K and is truly beautiful, most people don't have a high-end 4K TV or gaming monitor, so many won't be able to see the true power of the Series X. This is where the Series S comes to play. Even though it comes without a disk drive and the ability to output native 4K or higher resolutions, the features of the Series S include 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, 1440p resolution and up to 120 frames per second ray tracing support 4k but that's only for media playback and upscaling only variable rate shading variable refresh rate and ultra low latency and since the series s can't output no higher than 1440p the games are not going to look as sharp as it was on the series x but 1440p is still good and once it's upscaled to 4k many won't be able to tell the difference so pretty good specs to say the least. It's about 60% smaller than the X and the rectangular design reminds me a lot of the Xbox 360. But thankfully, it comes without the Red Ring of Death. Very minimal and will fit in any, if not all, entertainment and desk setups. And as a standalone unit, you can stand it up vertically or you can lay it horizontally to fit your setup. And it's designed with exhaust grills on pretty much every side to help keeping it from getting too hot. Around the back of the console, you will find a power port, a HDMI port, two 3.1 USB ports, an Ethernet port, and a storage suspension slot. And on the front of the console is a power button, an extra 3.1 USB port, and a sync button to connect your controllers and your Xbox headsets. The Series X controller is no different from the Series X and have all the same features. Since the Series S only comes with 512GB of SSD storage, games like Call of Duty can take up many of it. So an expansion slot is available if you wanted to add more storage. It's costly compared to just using an external SSD or hard drive, but convenient so you won't have to repeatedly move games over from the external drive. Now when it comes to the games, you're getting the same games on the Series S as you would on the Series X, but it just had a lower resolution. These games are optimized for both consoles. The Series X comes without a disk drive, so all your games will have to be digital. So you won't be able to buy physical copies that are much cheaper than it would be online. Since I bought all my games digitally, this won't be a problem. And I do like that you can actually share digital games on the Xbox with Game Share. I found a bit more use with it on my gaming desk. It can easily hook up with my cash card, so when I want to stream or record my gameplay for YouTube. My keyboard is actually bigger than the Series S, so that shows you how small and compact it is. And I'm glad now that you can hook up a keyboard and mouse to the console. The days of PC owners bashing console gamers on having to use controllers is over. And with games like COD and Overwatch being cross-platform, everything is equal ground. So with a lower price tag compared to the Series X, this is the perfect console for those who don't care about the best graphics. I definitely wish I got the Series S before the S, but now I can have one in separate rooms without having to move it around. If you're able to get your hands on one, you totally won't regret it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe if you're not already. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.